Anthony? Oh, I'm so sorry, yes. Um, <laughs> lost the thought for a moment there. Um, I, I think it's perfectly clear from, from the, the conversation that we've had among us this evening that uh, to do good, to be good, to want the good, to want it to prevail, it, it, you don't have to be anything. You don't have to be a subscriber to Hinduism or the Olympian gods or the Norse gods or, or anything. In, in fact, on the contrary, if you look back across the landscape of history and you see how humanity has been loaded with suffering and uh, division and, and conflict as a result of religious differences, you look back, you see that early Christians of different sects who loathed one another so much that when they were thrown to the lions, they used to run to opposite ends of the, of, of the um, thing so they wouldn't be eaten by the same lions. And you, you, you look at what's happening in Baghdad today, you, you think of, of the way history screams at us with gory throats about the, the, the atrocities that have been committed in the name of faith. And you ask yourself, isn't it the case that these very natural, very warm feelings that human beings can have for one another when they know one another individually, and it becomes impossible to generalize. I mean, if you know somebody from another nation or another culture, another ethnicity, you know somebody well personally, it's very, very hard to, to continue to generalize, to accept the sorts of divisions that people want to impose because of labels, because of the identities that they choose for themselves. And you see that the, that the deepest division that has existed between people in human history, recorded human history, is the set of religious differences which has been productive of so much conflict and, and suffering. And you think of that and you move to the individual sphere. You think of the, of, of the teenager who is anxious because his private feelings may be leading him into sin or he's done something that may damn his immortal soul because he's been told that it will. You, you think about the torment of that. So on every scale, you can think of ways in which Religion, religious belief, religious hegemony, religious oppression has stood in the path of the good. And we know from the, from the historical record how uh, organized religious bodies have resisted tooth and nail every inch of progress that's been made in science. Look at the history of the modern West, for example, since the Reformation. The desire to increase the liberty of the individual against the desire of, of religion supporting absolute monarchy to keep control over individuals. The idea of the secret policeman who sees what you do in the dark, it's a wonderful instrument of control over people's minds. And what, what has been sought in, in the period of, of uh, time that has elapsed since the Reformation has been an increasing margin of discretion for individuals to make their own choices, make up their own mind, and to live a life which is free of those trammels, in which their imagination and their will is not loaded down with ancient stories that come from the, the infancy of humankind. Would we be better off without religion? So, so much better off if only we could breathe the free air of our, of our personal liberty, our choice, our freedom to love one another as human beings and cooperate with one another, not because of labels, not because we don't want to go to hell, but because we choose to.